and, and thank you for welcoming us here today to present at the Renal Support Network's Hope Week. Uh, we're happy to be here. My name is Christy Schneider, and I'm the Director of Clinical Development for Tolaris Therapeutics and also a solid organ nurse practitioner. Uh, joining me today, you've already met, is Sarah Douglas. Sarah is our Manager of Patient Advocacy and Engagement here at Tolaris, um, has a, a extensive history in bone marrow transplantation as a nurse and nurse educator. Um, Today, we'd like to speak with you briefly about an opportunity for those living with kidney disease undergoing a living donor kidney transplant. Additionally, we'll be speaking about an investigational cell therapy called FCR001 that is not currently FDA approved. Uh, these are our disclosures. Uh, we are um, employees of Tolaris Therapeutics. And again, uh, we will be speaking about a product FCR001 that is not currently FDA approved. There are a number of different reasons that someone may develop kidney disease, uh, including genetic or inherited conditions such as Alport syndrome, polycystic kidney disease, autoimmune conditions such as focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, also known as FSGS, IgA nephropathy and lupus, as well as chronic conditions such as type two diabetes and high blood pressure. Currently, there are two options for end-stage kidney disease, dialysis and transplantation. During dialysis, the blood is filtered through a machine to remove toxins uh, and fluid. However, dialysis may only restore about 10 to 15% of the function as comparison to a healthy kidney. Another treatment for end-stage kidney disease is transplantation. Options for kidney transplant currently includes um, different types such as direct kidney donation where one person will donate a kidney to a directly to a specific person, often someone they know, um, pair donation where there's a paired swap with four people, a non-directed donation and what's called the cease donor transplantation. Transplantation offers some benefits over dialysis, including longer life expectancy following transplant as compared to, to dialysis, and an overall improved quality of life. Uh, more freedom due to not needing to follow a dialysis schedule, fewer dietary restrictions, and high blood pressure medications, as well as lower treatment costs um, associated with long-term dialysis. Um, although kidney transplant is better than being on dialysis, there are still some risks associated with the procedure, which you and your transplant team uh, will discuss with you. Uh, and I'd just like to tell you a little bit about um, kidney transplantation, what's involved with donation. Uh, during evaluations for both transplantation and to become a living kidney donor, you will work with your interdisciplinary team of healthcare professionals, including transplant surgeons, nephrologists who are kidney doctors spe uh, specialized in transplant medicine, pharmacists, nurse coordinators, social workers, nutritionists, and financial counselors. Additionally, in the case of evaluation to be a living kidney donor, there is what's called an independent living donor advocate who works on behalf of the donor uh, to ensure that the decision to donate is voluntary and that um, their rights are being um, taken into consideration. Uh, there are a number of medical tests which are performed to help ensure that each potential kidney donor and transplant, um, they're medically suitable for transplantation. Uh, transplantation, including blood compatibility, tissue typing or tissue matching to uh, determine the degree of match, uh, chest x-rays to look at your lungs, electrocardiogram to evaluate heart function, as well as cancer screening. To main ki maintain kidney function and prevent kidney rejection, currently parent, patients are required to take lifelong immunosuppression or anti-rejection medications. These medications have been shown to be good at preventing rejection, but can cause some long-term side effects, including actually decreasing the long-term function of the kidney itself, cardiovascular side effects, such as high blood pressure, cholesterol, or weight gain. Transplant patients are also at increased risk of infections and in certain types of cancer, um, and anti-rejection medication can, can cause neurologic issues, such as neuropathy, tingling in the hands and feet, as well as depression. Additionally, Due to the significant number of medications that transplant patients need to take, it can be difficult to maintain um, and be compliant with the, with the medication schedule. And I will 
minutes, if Sarah, if you would take over. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, so what is FCR001 cell therapy? So this is an investigational stem and immune cell based product that come from, comes from the kidney's donor's blood. Um, and then it's administered as a one-time infusion into the recipient after their kidney transplant. Um, our founder at Talaris, Dr. Su Suzanne Ilstad, has been working on this investigational stem cell therapy um, for over 30 years. And so the goal of FCR001 is to establish a dual immune system. Um, so that means part donor, part recipient in order to promote immune tolerance. The recipient and the donor immune cells coexist, meaning that the recipient's body may accept their own cells as the donor cells. Uh, this would potentially allow the recipient's immune system to recognize the newly transplanted kidney as its own without the need for immunosuppressive medicines, um, therefore increasing the longevity of the newly transplanted kidney. So FCR001 was studied in a phase two clinical trial in which 37 subjects who received a living donor kidney transplant were also treated with the one-time infusion of FCR001. 26 of the 37, or 70%, were able to be discontinued of all their anti-rejection medications 12 months following their transplantation, and all of the recipients who were able to be discontinued from anti-rejection medications have remained off with no biopsy-proven rejection of the newly transplanted kidney. Um, currently, the median time for the follow-up of these individuals is over seven years, with the longest being over 12 years off immunosuppression. Um, it is important to know that there have been adverse events with um, that were observed in the phase two clinical trial. Uh, there are can be significant complications associated with FCR001 cell therapy, uh, which you should discuss with your physician if you're considering this trial. So uh, let's discuss Freedom One study. The Freedom One study is now a phase three clinical research study of our investigational cell therapy. Freedom One will help us learn more about the safety and effectiveness of um, FCR001 in people who receive a kidney transplant from a living kidney donor. Uh, the goal of this phase three trial is to help determine if the living donor kidney transplant and the stem cell transplant with our investigational cell therapy could help prevent the rejection of the kidney donor or the donor kidney and eliminate the need for lifelong immunosuppression and anti-rejection medications. Uh, it is important to know participation in this study is voluntary, and this pres presentation is only for informational purposes and does not replace the full informed consent process that you would have with your physician. Um, to qualify for Freedom One study, you must be at least 18 years old and have been recommended by your doctor to undergo a kidney transplantation. This trial is for those receiving the kid a kidney transplant for the first or per a new amendment that we have a second time and who have been diagnosed with or have not been diagnosed with cancer in the past. Um, a suitable, they must have a suitable living kidney donor um, that has been identified and approved to donate their kidney. And then they also must be willing to donate and collect stem cells through procedures known as apheresis or mobilization before the kidney transplant. Um, and I will review those procedures here in a few more slides. Um, so to qualify, oh, let's see, okay, so the Freedom One trial is a trial in which uh, two donor recipient groups are randomly assigned to either the FCR001 cell therapy group or to the control group, um, which will receive standard immunosuppressive medicines following their kidney transplant. Um, twice as many recipients will be assigned to the FCR01 group as to the control group. Um, the patients will be informed of which group they're assigned to, and recipients in this trial will be followed for five years, while their donors will be followed for one year after transplant. So, okay, so um, this chart shows the journey of the kidney donors and the recipients who receive FCR001 cell therapy. Approximately three to five weeks before kidney transplantation, the donor and the recipient will go through mobilization. So mobilization is a treatment process that stimulates the stem cells in the bone marrow to enter the bloodstream. Pairs will receive a medicine um, to mobilize those stem cells, and um, this is as an injection under the skin. The donor and the recipient then donate um, the stem and immune cells using an intravenous or an IV catheter. So this process is called apheresis. Um, FCR001 cell therapy is then processed in our lab um, from the donor cells. 
And then four days before the kidney transplant, recipients will start receiving conditioning, um, which this includes various medicines and a single low dose of radiation. Uh, the conditioning allows the acceptance of the donor stem cells contained in the FCR001 cell therapy. And then on day zero, as we call it, the recipient undergoes the kidney transplant. And then the day following, or day plus one, receives an infusion of the investigational stem cell therapy. Uh, donors and recipients have regular visits after the kidney transplant to monitor their health. Recipients continue to receive immunosuppressive medicines twice daily. But if there's no uh, biopsy-proven rejection, there's stable chimerism and no graft-versus-host disease between 6 to 12 months after their kidney transplant and the investigational th cell therapy, the immunosuppression medicines can potentially be lowered and then stopped 12 months after transplant. Um, and then, like we said, recipients will continue to be followed for five years. Um, the control group, or those randomized to receive the standard anti-rejection medications, will receive a kidney transplant on day zero and will be followed frequently for the first 12 months with yearly monitoring through five years. And then um, potential benefits of enrolling in the Freedom One trial may include regular and careful attention from the transplant physicians and healthcare professionals, this feeling that you're taking an active role in your care, uh, potential access to an investigational treatment that isn't available yet, and then also contributing to research that may help patients in the future. Uh, potential risks may include that FCR001 may not work for you, it may cause serious side effects, and um, you will not be able to choose which two of the treatments you re will receive since it is randomly assigned. Um, but as a note, study-related costs will be covered by the sponsor. Um, to learn more about the Freedom One trial, we ask you to please visit freedomonestudy.com or clinicaltrials.gov has our listing as well. Um, it will provide the locations of the different transplant centers that do offer this study. Um, and since we just have a few more minutes, I am going to wanted to briefly tell you about the um, Freedom Two study. So it, this is a similar study, uh, but it allows it will we will assess the safety, preliminary effectiveness, and overall benefit of FCR zero zero one cell therapy to prevent rejection in recipients of a previously transplanted kidney from a living donor without the need of lifelong anti rejection drugs. Um, to qualify for this study. Um, you must be 18 years of age um, and you will have received a living donor kidney transplant three to 12 months prior to this um, and will have not been diagnosed with any type of cancer. Similarly, your donor must be between 18 to 16 years old and will um, undergo those apheresis and mobilization procedures. Um, the recipient journey Freedom 2 includes a living donor kidney transplant three to 12 months before Freedom 2 screening. And then the kidney donor and the recipient must donate stem cells via those procedures we discussed. Um, and so for more information on that trial, you can go to freedom2study.com. I think with that, if we have any questions, we'd be happy to answer those. I think there were a couple um, questions in, in the um... Uh, chat that I'd be happy to answer. One was how many people are seeking a kidney transplant? And currently there's about 120,000 people on the kidney transplant waiting list um, each year for specifically a deceased donor. Of those, um, there are about um, 17,000 kidney transplants annually um, each year. Of those, about 12,000 are from deceased donors and 5,000 from living donors. And will this study ever be available for people who are seeking a second transplant? Yes. Sure, so, um, yeah, per our new amendment, it will. Uh, we do for Freedom One. Uh, it's for first and second kidney transplant recipients. Um, is it third too, or just first and second? Just first and second at this. Okay. Time. Okay. Nobody. Well, I've had four, so I'm an over <laughs> Good for you. Um, the kidneys, but um, um, if you go to the FreedomOneStudy.com website, as Sarah said, there's a list of all the, the, the centers that are currently participating, if, if any of those are of, of interest um, to you. And, and certainly you can reach out to them to ask more questions as well. Well, thank you ladies so much for your dedication. And, you know, it's really exciting. Um, so we look forward to seeing, you know, your next phase. Yeah, thank you thank so you much. Thank you for having thank us. Thank you so it's much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. And a shout out to our corporate mission partners for making this happen.